Now to the real heroes, the entrepreneurs. Uh, you will soon meet um, four talented, passionate, and successful entrepreneurs. Uh, all of them have ambitions to build large Swedish export companies. Our first hero is uh, a person, John Elvesjö. He's executive vice president of, and CTO of Toby Technology. Some of you may have, have heard of that company, uh, but it's not extremely well known. Um, John and his colleagues started um, Toby Technology in 2001 as a research project from Royal Institute of Technology. And today the company is a world leader in eye tracking technology. Recently they completed an interesting financing round with 21 million US dollar from Intel Capital. But, this is a really interesting the message to the entrepreneurs here. The first five, six years, they didn't uh, use any venture capital at all. They focused on attracting paying customers from day one. That is beautiful. Welcome, Jon Elvesjö. Hi everyone, is this thing on? Mats, are we live? Thanks a lot for the introduction. And uh, before I say anything else, happy, happy anniversary. I'm a, I'm a huge Sting fan, so I'm, I'm extremely happy to see uh, the development and, and all the hard work that you put in, so congratulations. And uh, I'm extremely proud, actually, for the invitation uh, that you that you've given me uh, to, to come here and present a little bit. Um, Pat did have some, some, some ideas for the presentation, like, because uh, he's seen the Toby presentation so many times. So, John, let's do something different this time. So I made something different. I made a whole presentation about how babies are made. <laughs> I, don't worry. Uh, it's actually the baby in this case is Toby. So um, how how babies are made? I mean, um, we are we're all uh, in one way or the other involved in building businesses, trying to conceive, educate, have the little baby grow to to a child and then to something more and then to an adult and maybe that business that baby will one day have its own kids, right? So I've kind of looked through the history of Toby, and instead of doing a normal, like, this is what we do, and blah, 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 I've just looked at some of the highlights, some good ones and some terrible ones that we've experienced over the last 10 years. Funny enough, we actually had our 10-year anniversary just a few months ago. Thank you. So, <laughs> starting uh, with just a, um, a first little <laughs> picture here, and this is where the baby is born, or made, I should say. So, this is me, actually. You might not be able to tell because I had hair at the time. Uh, and one of my two co-founders, Morton, uh, in this picture, you can see we're actually using a different logo, and that's the, our previous uh, little baby a baby that didn't do as well as Toby. Uh, maybe a practice run, if you like. Uh, it was good fun, and, and, and everybody survived, so no harm done, uh, and we learned a lot. So that was kind of where, we, where all the ideas came from on how not to educate your children. So this is really the baby stage. Uh, from there, actually, it's, uh, it was great straight down to business. We've been fiddling around with other businesses before, and you know, we've, uh, we've tried to join all the competitions, to make all the business plans, and do everything by the book, and, and you know, try to be really good entrepreneurs. And, but this time, we just skipped all the bullshit. Just build the product and sell it. So the little device you see there in the picture, 
2002, so the company was probably like six months old, the little baby, and we, we put something out. So this was the kind of first little success. The baby could make, you know, just have a little, you know, take a little step or say the little first word. This is our first word. And our third co-founder uh, took this little baby and, and sold it to an Austrian company, prepaid, and it didn't even work. So, you know, it lasted for two weeks and then the smoke just came out of the whole system. So, but they paid for it. <laughs> and, and that's really what, what, what was important. <laughs> For us, they're still they're still a happy customer. So so we are actually we're still shipping them new products every year. So, and we and we will never forget what they did for us. So, so they uh, we take special care of them. So this is uh, in the analogy to 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 babies making babies and and educating and, and seeing your children grow. This is kind of the first step. It was good. It was fun. You know, we were everybody in the same little office. It was it was really. A special time in, in our, our uh, kind of early days. And then came the little backlash that the bubble had bursted and the whole reason why we became entrepreneurs with the uh, schon and the Stolfen Holstein and all those, uh, the Furius and, you know, all the heroes that we had, they were really not as popular anymore. Uh, the stock market was really not happy at all. And, uh, you know, looking for a couple of hundred million Swedish to invest in optical design for a sensor that would revolutionize how we operate computers, mm, well, you couldn't really do that. So we didn't get any money at all, uh, which meant that I sold my apartment. I moved in my mother again. That was tough. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest sacrifices that, we, that I ever made you know, to make Toby <laughs> come true. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, I, I, I won't go any deeper into that. But anyways, it, it, it was a big sacrifice. And, and it, so it was tough. 2003 was really, we had pushed out a couple of devices, and they didn't really work well, and nobody wanted to fund us, and we still couldn't get any decent salaries. So it was tough. Then what? Did it get any better? Yeah, it did, actually. We, we managed to kind of in the range here 2004-ish, uh, we actually had something that we would call a decent product. One could ask, what did we sell before we had our product? Well, prototypes, I guess. I mean, they didn't come with a C mark, or <laughs> they didn't comply to any rules or anything, actually. Um, probably completely illegal, what we did. Um, <laughs> well, good thing nobody caught us, because you know, we survived that period by being true entrepreneurs. 2004, happy days. We got the first assistive product out, so we really found an, a real market for eye tracking, people that really could use eye tracking for something completely new, something that they couldn't do before. People that literally cannot use a computer, people that have never written a single line, a single word, some of them haven't even spoken by themselves, always assisted by a person, could now really write. They can send emails even. It's usually rewarding to, to see that. So we were really just filled with energy from, from actually making that happen. Uh, and we got some angel investors in. So I guess some of the uh, problems from the, from the IT burst, uh, kind of people were looking to invest a little bit again. So, so that was good. So what happened? I mean, this is probably when we were, we're, we're really running our bike and we're kind of early adolescent, kind of there's really no dangers. We didn't understand really what we were doing, had no fears whatsoever, so let's go into the US. Why not? <laughs> you know, we did, and uh, it, well, it wasn't, it wasn't very smart. It wasn't very well thought through. Um, I mean, we still, at this time, we probably had, we had raised probably in the range of four or five million Swedish crowns. Not a lot if you're opening your office in the US and you're hiring this big hotshot American guy to run your business for you. So this didn't, this didn't do well. But you know, we were young, fearless, into the US. What could we do next? We've just opened in the US. Let's open in Norway. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so without any funding, we managed to acquire this little uh, Viking software business that actually filled the gap. So I think we did a good choice. Um, we, we needed something. Again, still, you know, we come from eye tracking. We've developed this cool technology that we really love and we think will revolutionize the world. 
but still nobody really wanted it. So we had to kind of wrap the whole thing in with sugar and mustard and you, know, you name it on top to package it so people could use it. So this software actually enabled people to communicate properly with gays. So sure, we made a little sensor and sold that in a couple of hundred units, no true business. But this software actually, you know, it, it, really, it really did something to the company. It set us into kind of the true product. We actually had something for the end customer that we could be proud of for the first time. So here we are kind of getting into, I'd say, uh, if we allow ourselves to think that we're adult now, which I don't know if it's correct, actually. Uh, we still, you know, we're kind of young adults, maybe. Uh, here we're probably like... 16, 17, dating, you know, all that exciting period. So it was probably time for our first real relationship, our first girlfriend. Here he is, Anders Ersen from Investor. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not here, but he would probably love to be referred to as my first girlfriend. But <laughs> uh, it, really, it really was. I mean, uh, so we made, um, we made it all the way to 2007 with 5 million Swedish crowns in, in venture capital, um, angel money, families, and other fools, actually. Um, and here, we actually did a proper round. We had a decent company. We entered into this relationship. We got 100 million Swedish crowns from, from investor. And that really you know, enabled us to, to get over some, some problems, some hinders that we had, and, and, and build a, a, a true company. So what happened then, you think? Well, Yes, when, what happens when you're dating? <laughs> you run into, well, I, I don't know, bad people. One relationship actually didn't go that well. Um, we, um, we had, in our struggles in the U.S., throughout this time, actually, we never succeeded in the U.S. Um, we struggled with the culture. We struggled with pretty much everything. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a you know, kind of profitable investment at all. So... Um, just to top it off, our finance manager uh, stole one million U.S. dollars from us. Just a you know, bank transfer, gone. Sad days, actually. It was it was terrible. It was a person that we knew really well, and uh, you know we couldn't understand it. But it's probably had something to do with the culture and how much attention we paid to you know, when we recruited and, and, you know, the routines we had and how much time we spent over there, actually, so. Anyways, uh, moving on. Now we're actually, we're getting through some of the really tough times in, in the Toby history. The product portfolio is really building up. We, we enter into China. We're setting up. Now we're actually really considering us ourselves to be a, a true, true business. So let's marry. <laughs> so... This is uh, the time when North Zone and Amadeus Capital, and uh, yeah, he's still there, Anders, so he, he, he was uh, in this round as well. So in 2009, we actually got some, some real substantial funding from, from these uh, investors, and uh, from all the fundraising we've ever done, I think this was actually the easiest one. Uh, it required a lot of documents, but at this time, you know, we had a lot of good staff, you know, CFOs, COOs, CEOs, you name it. We had it all, and uh, we still do. So it's, uh, it, it, you know, it doesn't, just because you're raising more money doesn't mean that you're actually, uh, that it will be much more work, actually. So uh, at least that's our experience. So we were, we're moving, um, you know, what happens after marriage? <laughs> well, babies. So iTrack Shop, um, I'm happy to say that I actually attended earlier this morning the first board meeting in iTrack Shop as its separate company. Not only separate legal entity, but with a separate board, separate investors, so it's a true spin-off. And, you know, we've always been very uh, focused on the culture. Uh, when we've failed in the culture, we've always suffered from that. Uh, when we've succeeded, we've always gained from it. So it's about culture. And one thing that we've cherished a lot is the intrapreneurship. So people with ideas, good ideas, bad ideas, doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's, it's the initiative. We pay for your initiative. If you do something that hasn't been asked of you, 
That's really what we want to pay for. And here we have a beautiful example of a company being born within Toby, set free, provided with some basic rules, some basic tools, and some basic funding. An entrepreneur acting as a CEO, building the business to the stage where they actually last week closed their own round of financing. So they have their own owners. They're actually, I mean, we, we, we remain a, a large stakeholder in the company, and we've generated a lot of, of value to our shareholders through this initiative, through, you know, by supporting this. But it's, it's a, so beautiful to see how our idea is now giving birth to other ideas. So I, I really sincerely hope that we'll see even you know, more of these kind of spin-offs out of Toby. So uh, if we would have held on to this, uh, it really would have uh, been suffocated, I think, in the large organization. So uh, moving on, now we're get, you know, getting to the adult stage. And, and now we're into the hobbies, down to doing the fun stuff, doing really building into the vision, the true vision. So after 10 years, I can, I can honestly say we're starting now. We've, we've done the really basic work. We've built a platform to, to start from. And now it's just to take that and realize the true vision, which, which for us is putting an eye tracker into every laptop in case you missed that. <laughs> All right. So this is the trip that we made. Great, John. Um, do you know that uh, I have a, a secret to tell you? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> why am, why am I worried? No, it's, it's a good secret. <laughs> okay. Um, I talked to Intel Capital, as you know. And they said this was before they decided to invest in Toby technology. They told me this is the most well-managed company they have ever seen. Uh, <laughs> I blame it all on my colleagues. <laughs> and, and that is, I mean, they are one of the largest investors in the world in number of investments. They're really large investors. Yep. So that's a really, really good sign. And you're, you're important in many ways also as inspiration for others who like to do the same journey. So yep. I'm so glad that you made it here. And uh, we wish you all success to become a really, really large player in the world. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Now I would like to go on to another of those uh, extremely important heroes that we have. Um, this is a person and a team that has taken on a fantastic challenge. Um, they decided to develop the world's most cost-efficient solar cell production system in the world. Solar cell production system. This is an industry uh, where investors all over the world have invested masses of money and lost masses of money also. Uh, it's also dominated by really, really large players in the world, now mainly Chinese players. To enter such an industry and say that, well, yes, we're going to be better than all of this, that is a real, real challenge. But this is what Sven Lindström and his team did 2004, when they decided to form uh, the company Midsummer. Please welcome Sven Lindström. Welcome. So good to see you here, Sven. Yeah, very nice to be here. Thank you. How did you get the idea? Uh, it all started when uh, I was heading a daughter company for a Swedish company called M2 Engineering, who was manufacturing uh, production equipment for CD and DVDs. And uh, <clears throat> to manufacture a CD or a DVD cost less than five euro cent, even 2004. And I think it's even cheaper today, even though I left the industry. But uh, uh, the equipment that we made had a fantastic productivity. Uh, uh, it takes about three seconds to manufacture a DVD. And uh, uh, productivity is 
so large so that from one of the machines that we manufactured, which is ba was basically two square meters wide, uh, they produced over 30,000 DVDs each day. And during the course of one year, over 35 billion CDs and DVDs are manufactured in the world. So we had this great technology. Uh, in 2002, 2003, I was in US and I saw the market was actually, start you could see that uh, people were starting to download more and more videos and uh, um, I didn't see, really see the future for producing CDs or DVDs with the equipment. And then I thought, couldn't this technology and this great productivity be used for something else? And uh, what popped into my mind was uh, thin film solar cells. And uh, we had everything in there in the production equipment. We, we had the deposition of thin films. We had the bonding of, of layers and we had the curing, uh, etc. So we had everything in the equipment. So that's basically how. Yeah, but, but anyway, I mean, <coughs> that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was, and, and uh, actually uh, I, I started to look around and, and uh, ask people and, and people said, no, you, you can't do that with sputtering, everybody is uh, uh, evaporating these materials and sputtering doesn't work, they tried that 10 years ago, etc. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I must say, I'm, I'm really impressed to, to dare to, to do that in, in that extremely sort of competitive and capital intensive business. That, that is really, really, really cool, I think. Yeah, I, I guess, I mean, it's 50% it's luck and 50% ignorance as well, I guess. So. <laughs> so, so what is the status of the company today? Uh, today we're 40 people. Uh, we sold the first production equipment to China late last year. Um, uh, we have a turnover of about 65 million Swedish crowns and, and uh, we have been profitable for the last three years. That's pretty good. And, and one machine is approximately that sum of money or something like that? Well, uh, six, seven million US yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the cost of each machine. Uh, so that's the, so the ticket size. Mm -hmm. And, and how s uh, can, can you share with us some of the setbacks uh, that you've had during the years? Because n not mm -hmm. everything has been sort of like that. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> well, make it in two minutes. <laughs> well, well, we have... Uh, We've had a lot of setbacks, and we have setbacks every day, of course. Uh, we've been fairly lucky. We haven't had really any super large setbacks. Uh, one of the setbacks uh, we had was, uh, I mean, for, for the designing of the equipment and everything, we relied on our network of, of uh, uh, our experience from the optical disc market, which has been a tremendous help. And we tried to do that also for the sales. So we, we kind of contracted our old, old uh, sales agents all over the world but it turned out that they were in the completely wrong segment to sell this equipment. So uh, before we understood that, that was actually quite a large setback. Yeah. Uh, that's at least one of them. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm going to uh, take another question, but you are also able to put on questions here. So you think about a question now, uh, and, and then we'll have some microphones passing around here. But um, now you have done this for, since 2003, 2004. What would be your sort of best advice to persons here that are in your position 2004? Well, um, th there's a lot of advice. Uh, I mean, we've, um, we've tried to keep the cost down already from the start. Because if, you, if your costs start to accelerate, then you sometimes in, in your business life you have to set you have to scale back and uh, we knew that this was going to eventually be a commodity product where price means everything uh, in the early days uh, um, uh, people only cared about efficiency but we knew sooner or later this will be a commodity and it is today so we have a tremendous advantage today when the market is really competitive that we have had a very low cost structure so that's the number one advice i can give you uh, second thing would be, for example, uh, we, we always raised money uh, in uh, coordinates with when we received a, a grant from the government or from the EU or something. Uh, so uh, that means that our investors, they only had to top up the top 50%. So we already had a, 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 a grant uh, to start with. And I think that that um, helped us to, to keep the valuation of the company yeah. fairly high. Yeah. So do we have any questions from the audience here to Sven? Please raise your hand. There's one over there. Would you have a microphone? Or uh, who are your customers and where in the world are they? 
Um, uh, we're, we're focusing on a few markets. We're still a fairly small company. Uh, uh, so the main market for us is China. Over 50% of all the solar cells in the world are produced in China. Uh, as for market segment, we're looking both to the traditional silicon solar cell manufacturers. Uh, but we've seen a tremendous interest because our equipment is very small. It's fairly cheap compared to our competitors. So it's all companies looking to take a step up into high tech, into clean tech. And they could have been manufacturing uh, turbines. They could have been manufacturing bulk chemicals. But they are all also successful entrepreneurs and they want to step up, take a step up in the technology. So that's uh, the, the least common denominator I can find among our customers. Any more questions to run here? So what are the plans now, the coming years? Uh, the plans the coming years is uh, to keep on uh, selling uh, production equipment. Uh, the market is huge. It's uh, at least uh, 100 times bigger than when we started. The market has been growing tremendously fast. And uh, we haven't really kept up with the market, even though we've been growing quite fast. So uh, uh, we want to expand our production capacity. We also see the possibility to diversify uh, to use the same kind of equipment to manufacture other uh, uh, devices for uh, similar like uh, photovoltaics, uh, for example, thermoelectrical devices, etc. So this is an example of a, a really high technology, capital intensive company that is really difficult to build, which have been built. Thank you, Sven. From this hardcore technology, we're going to move on now to magic and entertainment. We're moving to the music world and the startup company Dormir and our third and fourth heroes. Sven Emtel and Leif Ottosson um, will share their experience and demonstrate a new music software company has been born. Please welcome Sven and Leif. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Am I out there? Yes. Hello, my name is Sven Amtel. Behind me, you can see the two founders of the company Doremir. To the left, that's me. And to the right, you have Professor Sven Ahlbeck. And he, who, uh, his research is the foundation of the company Dormir. Now, unfortunately, Sven Albeck couldn't be here today since he's on a business trip to the United States. But instead, as a stand-in, I have by my side Leif Ottosson. And first, to make you understand what we do at Dormir, Leif will make a short demonstration of our software score cleaner. Yeah, so uh, the unique thing about score cleaner uh, is that you notate by playing uh, without click track or any presets whatsoever. You just play and then the program will interpret what you play. Like this. Let's see. Take away that. And when you're done, you just double click your recording and voila. There it is. <clears throat> so, to be honest with you, I'm not too sure about this ending. That's one of the most lame things I've ever heard. So I think I'm going to change that by playing. Yeah, I'm going to change this pitch as well. And this one. going to change the rhythm of this one. Yeah. And maybe add some lyrics. What do you say? Uh, come and dance a waltz with me and my 
friends in Sting. There we go. And maybe a title. Uh, Waltz with Sting. Made by me. And then it's a piano piece. OK. There it is. And uh, yeah, it's basically ready to be printed for my students. So for the first time, we can automatically get a useful score notation from your playing without any click track and without using any presets. And this is a dream come true for anyone who wants to share their musical thoughts with others uh, in an easy manner. That can be um, composers, musicians, music teachers, hobby musicians, or anyone. So the unique technology in the product score cleaner comes from research, from 20 years of research by Sven Albeck. That's uh, research in music cognition. In his dissertation in 2004, he used the predecessor to score cleaner. He became aware that people were interested in what, what he was doing and in this program. They said things like, well, I'm not very interested in your research, but the program that you're using, I would really like to have that. So that was the first indication of commercial potential of Sven's research. One critical event that could have meant the end of Doremir is the following. In late 2007, we met a big company in our business, uh, and they, they were very interested in our technology. They wanted to buy a great part of Doremir. Now they put together a huge contract that took us a lot of time and a lot of effort. And finally, in, the, in late 2008, more than one year after the first contact, they were in big financial troubles due to the 2008 recession, and they chose not to go on with this deal. So we were devastated. What should we do? Well, we learned a lot of things in this journey. And the most important thing was that we understood that what we had was a really revolutionary thing when it comes to translating your music into notation. So we decided not to give up, but instead to aim for making our own product. In mid-2010, Sven and I, we were working part-time, but the development process, the development pace was slow. We thought we had to do something. So a relative of Sven's told us that we could go to KTH Innovation because they help companies emerging from research. But KTH Innovation, they said that a more appropriate place for us would be Sting, Stockholm Innovation and Growth. And therefore, in late 2010, we were admitted to Sting Business Lab. And right from the start, things were starting to speed up. We set up a tight, um, uh, tight schedule with goals and uh, goals for every week and deadlines. And we started to work. And the help we've had from Sting has been very good, very nice. We, we have had committed commitment from Sting, uh, they're very professional, and they've always been also very interested in what we're doing. So this time with Sting has really been a milestone for us. Users. We have good contact with many of our core users. <coughs> we've had test sessions, we had events, we have been meeting our prestige users, 
and the feedback that we get from these from the users together with our own experience have made the foundation of new features into our product we get a lot of inspiration uh, from our users and we also get the feedback that we are going in the right direction and now Using score cleaner, you can do that in a lot of different contexts. And it would be naive for us to know, to think that we knew all these different contexts. So listening to our users, we feel that that is a trademark for Dormir. Our team has without doubt been a key factor of our success. We've been able, as a niche player, we've been able to attract committed and very talented people with the right background. One key player to mention is our marketing director, Andreas Sundgren. He has, before joining us, he made a similar international journey with another Swedish company in the music industry. We also have had great support, both financial and with experience, from four members of the Sting Business Angels. Now, finally, here is part of our team at Ny Teknik and Affärsvärldens event 33 listan a few weeks ago. Thank you. Great to hear, Sven and Leif. And uh, do Thanks. we have any questions from the audience to Dory Mir company? So please uh, don't be shy if you want to ask anything. I have a question. Yeah, there we have one question. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was wondering, this, this is a beautiful product. Is this uh, for the end consumer or is it for, for any other? Do you, do you sell it to the end consumer? Yes, uh, we sell it. Um, we have events where we sell it directly to end users. And we have traditional sales via distributors and resellers. And we also have sales on the web, um, as supported by social media. Yeah. So what, there is a question over there. Yeah, Tero Empera from Vision Plus. So I, I wanted to continue. Can you explain a little bit more that how much does it cost? And so what's the price of the product and who pays for what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You um, you buy a license to use it on your computer. And it's 995 crowns. That's the only price you have? Yes. Right. OK, thanks. It's a flat rate. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you buy a lot of licenses, you'll have yeah. another price. So what's the sales strategy? Uh, well, just as I explained, the sales yeah. strategy is uh, we, we sell uh, direct sales at events, and we sell through uh, distributors and resellers, and also on the web. And how is it going? Well, one thing that we've uh, experienced is that um, seeing is believing. So when we have these events and we demonstrate the product, um, most of the people in the audience will buy score cleaner on the spot. And our challenge is to make the same thing happen on the web. Okay. We wish you good luck and great success in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So um, now we have listened to um, three amazing stories. Um, John, with his company, developed since 2001, large company. Sven, uh, on their way to build, build a, a large company. And Doromir, in the very early beginning, all three representing different stages uh, of really innovative Swedish startups. Perhaps you thought that you were going to be here to sit and listen. Uh, that is totally wrong. Um, you're, at least uh, you who are not entrepreneurs, you're here to help and to serve. Because all our friends, the heroes, the entrepreneurs, they need all the support they can get. And now you get the opportunity to help them. We will soon start speed meetings. Um, and you will spend 30 minutes at one table 
and 30 minutes at another table. After the first 30 minutes, we will ring a bell. Then you go to the next table. And on the back side of your badge you have got, you can see the two tables you're going to go to. So please do it in the right order also. <laughs> because we have thought this, or actually Angela, Angela, somewhere here, Angela has thought this through uh, tremendously. So there's a plan. So 30 minutes at one table and 30 minutes at another table. And when you come to that table, there will be two entrepreneurs at the table. And they will put forward their most important question, their challenge they're having right now. You're going to help them to solve that question or issue. So be, please be generous with your, your help and networks um, and um, help them as much as you can do. So there are two sessions and uh, the tables are outside here. There are a couple of tables that are also at the entrance over there. And that is table 25 to 35. 25 to 35 is out by the entrance over there. The rest of the tables are in that direction. So please stick to the tables. Uh, I think there is... Uh, um, is, is there coffee some on the go? I think so. There's coffee on the go, yeah. And 10 minutes past two. 10 minutes past two, um, we're going to be here again. Because then we have um, our two keynote speakers. They're going to be here. So 10 minutes past two, we're here again. And then you will meet uh, Christina Lampe Önerud from Boston. And you will meet Ariel Margalit from Jerusalem on Jerusalem Venture Partners. So see you again 10 minutes past two.